Yo yo, Paul here. So today we're gonna talk about extraction and this is gonna be a, a super juicy video because it's the one thing that I wish someone had taught me in my early coffee days. If you break down coffee to its basic forms, it's pretty much just bean water. It's water that has extracted some compounds from the coffee bean. Let's talk about what the water actually extracts from the bean. What is it? What makes a cup of coffee coffee? Well, it's the balance of fats, acids, sugar, and plant fiber. The first thing that gets extracted are fats and acids. After that, the sugars start breaking down. And if you keep on pouring a lot of water, it will go into the plant fiber itself. If you stop too early, you might not have extracted all the sugars, creating a under extracted cup. If you extract it for too long, you will bring in plant fibers, creating a over extracted cup. So the ideal point is to extract the fats, acids, and then sugars, and try to minimize the plant fiber aspect. Now, what does extraction taste like? Well, I've made a video on that, so you should check out that in the description. But in a nutshell, under-extracted is sour, over-extracted is bitter, and a balanced cup has none of the qualities of either under- or over-extracted coffee. There are four different variables you can change in your brewing recipe that can impact extraction. The four are grind size, brew time, temperature, and the brewing ratio. Feel free to skip forward in the video to this timestamp if you want a quick summary chart on how the four variables can control extraction. The first one, grind size. So how can you change grind size to impact extraction? Finer grinds equal more extraction. Coarser grinds equal less extraction. But how does this work? Let's just wrap our heads around this. So by grinding a bean finer, what you're doing is you're exposing the insides of that bean to water, which then leads to an increase in extraction. And this is one of the easiest variables to change because most people, unless you're using pre-ground beans, can just turn a knob on their grinder to then change their grind size. Another variable you can tweak is time. So how can you control time to impact extraction? Longer brew time equals more extraction. Shorter brew time equals less extraction. The reason why this works is that the longer the water is in contact with the bean, the more it extracts. Some brewing devices can control time easier, like the French press, the Clever Dripper, and the inverted AeroPress method, because all the water is in contact with the beans until you decide to stop the extraction. With other brewing devices like a pour over, the liquid leaves the brewing device, which then stops that liquid from extracting more from the coffee. The next variable you can control is temperature. Now the way temperature impacts extraction is that a hotter temperature equals more extraction. A cooler temperature equals less extraction. Why does hotter water extract more from the coffee bean? So let's look at it from a molecular level. What is boiling water? It's pretty much just H2O molecules moving around trying to break free from each other. And if they do break free from each other, they become water vapor. Now, this movement over here is what's causing the extra extraction. So once those H2O particles come in contact with coffee beans, that extra friction causes more extraction. Now the opposite is also true, where cooler water slows down the molecules, which then causes a slower extraction. But if you put an ice cube on coffee grounds, there is no extraction at all. So the last way you can control extraction in your coffee is through your water to coffee ratio. And the way it works is that a higher brewing ratio equals more extraction. 
while a lower brewing ratio equals less extraction. So the reason why increasing the brewing ratio increases extraction is because when you use more water in your recipe, that water also wants some of the action of the extraction. And sadly enough, coffee has a finite amount of good coffee flavors that it can give to the water. So when you're pouring your water, the coffee will start giving out its acids and fats, and then it'll be giving out its sugars. And then when that extra water comes in, it's, it'll be like, oh, I don't have any more acids, fats, and sugars. Well, here's some plant fiber. And that is why using more water increases extraction. Now the flip side is that when you start using less water, we'll be giving out the acids and fats, and then there won't be any more water to then start extracting those sugars. Now that you know how to control extraction through the four variables, grind size, brew time, temperature, and the brewing ratio, you can now look at a brewing recipe and understand why it wants you to do specific steps to then brew a better cup of coffee. And for your convenience, here's a chart showing all the different ways you can control extraction with these variables. For your next cup of coffee, I challenge you to try to use a variable that you haven't used before to then control extraction. Who knows, you might not just surprise yourself, but also your taste buds. So if you've liked this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and perhaps hit that bell if you really like the content. Right now, we're aiming to post at least one video every week, and I hope to see you there in the next one. Until next time, peace.